Sanctum Prelate is coming to modern. And what better deck to put it in than our five color human deck? But that is easier said than done. First of all, Sanctum Prelate says, we choose a number and non-creature spells with that mana cost cannot be cast. So if we can get Prelate out early and name one, that shuts off Lightning Bolt, Fatal Push, and a ton of other modern staples. But here's the issue. We already have Meddling Mage, which when it enters, we name a card and that card cannot be cast. But let's say on turn two, we play Meddling Mage and name Lightning Bolt. And on the following turn, we play Prelate on one. That makes Meddling Mage a lot less valuable. Now, here's the thing. Three and a half years ago, when we birthed five color humans into the world, the most played deck in modern was Storm, which won with Grape Shot. So if we named Grape Shot with Meddling Mage, we were basically guaranteed to win. But the modern metagame today is much different, and Meddling Mage is far less valuable. So the logical thing to do, take out Meddling Mage and put in Prelate. It's certainly an improvement, especially since the number one threat to humans is red removal. But now we have another issue. The deck now has 12 cards that cost three, which diminishes Aether Vial. Vial works best with creatures that cost two. So ideally, we should replace some three drops. Let's talk about Mantis Rider. It's a great card, both offensively and defensively, because it has Vigilance. Three and a half years ago, a 3-3 blocker is actually pretty good. But nowadays, the power level is a lot higher. We have Shadow decks and Blitz decks, and a 3-3 or even a 4-4 blocker does absolutely nothing. So how about we remove Rider and instead bring in Mayor of Askrack? It gives our other humans plus one plus one. And at the beginning of each upkeep, if no spells were cast on the previous turn, Askrack transforms into this chunky boy, which makes a wolf at the end of each of our turns. It works really well with Prelate, because if our opponent can't cast anything, Askrack can flip. And it's also great with Aether Vial. But now we have another problem. We're short flyers. And that makes it hard to close out games. And since we are heavy on taxes, we'll bring in Elite Spellbinder. When it enters, we choose a card from our opponent's hand, and it makes it cost two more to cast. And scouting out our opponent's hand helps with Prelate. And that brings us to our build. Quite a bit different than our five color human deck, but the taxes synergy is pretty scary. And being on the receiving end of this must be pretty horrific. But enough talk, we must get to the spankings. Be sure to subscribe, and now here we go. Opening hand, two lands and a vial, so we're gonna keep. Start with vial. Oh, and a mountain. Pull an image, activate vial, and play Mayor of Ass Crack. Will we see a lightning bolt? Yeah. Oh, so be a mono red deck. How interesting. And bummer, no third land. So here's what we'll do. Activate vial, copy the mayor, and now they both transform. I'll play Manamorphose, Blister Coil, crash through. Manamorphose again. I'll play Monastery, light up the stage. And wait, why didn't our image transform this turn? Because we didn't cast anything. So like, am I missing something? Or is it just bugged? And man, if only we got the Sanctum out last turn, because they're really popping off here. And another light up the stage. They lava start our image. And we take 11. Opponent then plays another runaway. And there's our land. So here's what we'll do. Vile, Sanctum on one. Spellbinder. Opponent has a mountain in hand. And yep, our opponent's got us. So we're going to game two. I'm going into game two. We should be bringing in Plague Engineer, but I don't want to win because of it. So we'll bring in Mage and Champion. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand is as perfect as it gets. So we're going to keep. Start with Vile. And opponent draws a card. Oh, Thalia. As good as Champion is, Thalia takes priority. Opponent's passing back. Will Vile and Noble Hierarch. And now what a turn. Vile and Champion. Play Prelate. On one. And now swing for three. Back to opponent. Oh, and the opponent's passing back. Another Prelate. To catch our opponent off guard. Locks a Vile. Now they can't respond. Prelate on two. And swing for five. I think we have this locked down. We shall draw. Another Prelate. Cast it. On three. Can our opponent get out of this one? No. So we're going to game three. On game three, no change to sideboard. And we have the right cards, but only one land. I think that's just too risky. So we'll mull. And yeah, this is okay. We'll keep. Start with Noble. But they bolt. Ooh, nice champion, but we can't play it. So we'll just play Mayor of Askrack. Upon was Come on, land. Hooray! Play Prelate on one. Oh, what a gut shot. But that's okay. Because how are they going to deal with that? Oh, a Shrine of Burning Rage. So whenever they cast a red spell or on their upkeep, the Shrine gets a counter. And they can sack the Shrine and deal damage to any target. So Sanctum be in trouble. Ooh, but that good. So play Little Champion. Lieutenant to buff the Prelate. And then swing for three. And pass back. Oh, and another Prelate. Yes. It looks like our opponent be in trouble. So let's play a second Prelate. Also on one. Swing with everyone. On a block. So. Oh. And what? Perhaps our opponent's given up. Because back in our turn, land. Draw. Valley, but we'll play the champion. Oh, they do two damage to everything, wiping out half our creatures. But unfortunately for our opponent, we still deal eight damage. Hooray. And now we'll be on to the next match. Opening hand could be better, but mulligans are for losers, so we're going to keep. Opponent Inquisitions, taking our champion. Another land, and pass back. Another Inquisition, and a giver. We pull Mayor of Ass Crack, but how will we play Freebooter? Luris and Lingering Souls will take Lingering Souls. Ooh, and Tide Hollow. Taking Ass Crack? Oh, a Spellbinder. We can delay the Luris. All right, swing for one. Play Spellbinder, and then pass back. Opponent tickles for two. We draw a land. And to buy some time, let's bounce their giver. Cool. Swing for four. And at this rate, we'll outspeed our opponent. Oh, but it's Harmagoy. That's not good. We pull champion. So we'll play champion. And then a freebooter. Not that there's anything in hand. Swing for four. And back to opponent. Our opponent replays giver. Then they play their land. Because if they get to five mana, they can play Luris. Oh, we draw an image, but no blue mana. Draw. Eh. Swing up the flyers. But after having their butthole fondled, there is concede. So we're going to game two. I'm going into game two. Let's dump this with this one. That's going to game two. Oh, putting a hand, our mana curve is terrible. So we'll mole. Ew. But I guess since we're on the draw. Maybe we'll draw a second land. So we'll keep. Oh, and a hex drinker and a bobble. No second land. Whatever. Play noble. And it's back to opponent. Opponent swings for two. You know what? They're leveling up hex drinker. Interesting. And oh my gosh, I have no 
lands. Find me a vast crack. I'll find a level up hex drinker and place another hex drinker. Putting a level counter on that one. And still no second land. I was hoping to play Reflector Mage. In that case, Lieutenant. Swing for three. And back to opponent. Opponent be leveling up. And spanks us for eight. And exiles our noble. And there's our land. But sadly, they have us. So we're going to game three. Opening hand. Nothing too special. But the curve is pretty good. Soul key. Play champion. One plays bobble. And then passes back. Interesting. Now the question is, do we have Thalia or Freebooter this turn? They probably have Fatal Push. So let's force it out of them. Thalia. Oh, okay. Will they Fatal Push this turn? No, it's Hide Hollow. Taking our image. Another kite sail, but let's go Spellbinder. And ooh. Thalia is really hurting them here. And although Tarm Tarm is scary, Luris's lifelink is scarier. So we'll steal Luris. Swing for five. And it's back to opponent. Opponent swings. They play Tarm Tarm. Oh, and perfect. A Reflector Mage. Farewell, Goyf. Spanking them for nine. And unable to play either Goyf in their hand. I think our opponent's cheeks have been clapped. And there's a concede. So it's on to the next match. Opening hand. One land, but we have Noble. So we're going to keep. Start with Noble. Oh, going to be a red deck. We don't want them to keep Vexing Devil. So we'll take four damage to prevent it. And nice land. We could play Spellbinder, but we can instead dump all of our weenies. So let's do that. Champion, champion, and noble. And back to opponent. Oh, opponent cycle Street Wraith. And nice prelate. Prelate time. Oh, an opponent bolts. But prelate comes out. Swing for five. And back to opponent. Oh, oh, an opponent's passing back. Play Spellbinder. Oh, I just remember. But it's on the champion, not the prelate. Okay. Oh, and they'd be a shadow deck. But I think they're screwed. We'll target the Scourge. Play Lieutenant. And swing for five. And I think no matter what they do here, they can't escape Spellbinder. So we're going to game two. I'm going to game two. Let's dump this for this one. Let's go to game two. Oh, and this is very risky. But if our opponent doesn't have any removal, then it's okay. So we'll keep. Oh, and an Inquisition. And they take our Phantasm image, which means they probably have removal for Noble. Quite Noble. Oh, I have to be passing. So I guess we'll drop Prelate. Come on, Pot Scours. And now I expect they have Dismember. Or not? Why? Very suspicious. Someone plays Vexing Devil. We'll take the four damage. And opponent plays Scourge. That is unfortunate. How about we play Champion? Kite Sail. Oh, Magrande. Battle Rage is scary. And so is Explosive, but they can't play it on one. For five mana, they could take out the Prelate, though. All right, we'll take the Explosives and play Noble. And swing for four. Although Scourge becomes a 4 4. And if Scourge attacks here, that'll put us in a bad spot. Because they could give double strike. Oh, but they choose not to attack. Interesting. Oh, and look at this. Phantasmal image. Copying prelate on two. So, so much for battle rage. Swing for three in the air. And now pass back. Opponent plays bobble. And sadly for opponent, they're passing back. Another land. Swing for three in the air. And we'll send it back. Opponent cycles. And they be swinging. It block. They trade. And opponent plays shadow. Ooh. Oh, but a champion. So once again, swing for three. Play the champion. And there's the match. And now I'll be on to the next one. Oh, putting a hand is terrible, we'll mole. Oh, still pretty terrible. But we'll keep. Play noble. I'm gonna be passing. And we can either go double champion or booty. How about we go double champion? Oh, but a fatal push. I'm gonna be passing again. We pull prelate, but all we can do is free booter. Oh, that snap caster is a big problem because they can flashback fatal push next turn. Oh, well, take the op. Swing for three. And back to opponent. Oh, why? They play colonnade tab. There goes their butt cheeks because now we have prelate. Play it. Oh, with a fatal push. And now swing for two. I'm gonna be passing. Valley of it play spellbinder. I'm gonna drop the snapcaster, cling and dust, and force the negation. Neither one really helps them here, but in case they lose prelate, we'll take cling. And now swing for three. Why are they chump? Okay. And pass back. They draw godless shrine, and we know they have a planes in hand, which means by next turn colonnade will be online. That is a problem. But a well play spellbinder on force negation. Swing for six. But even with colonnade, if we attack with just spellbinder next turn, they'll have to trade. So I think we have this one. And yep, there's a concede. So it's on to game two. I'm going into game two. We'll dump the reflector mages for this one with Alice. Go to game two. Oh, but hand is awful. Three aether vials. I could have force negation. I guess against control, we'll try it. Valia, oh, yeah, cool. Play Vile. Vile hits. And opponent be passing back. And still no land. Play Aether Vile. That one hits as well. And opponent's passing again. Very suspicious. And oh goody, another Aether Vile. Let's play it. And now we could Vile and Meddling Mage and name Fatal Push. Yeah, we'll risk it. Cool. And now Swing for two. Oh, but a path of exile. At least we get a land. And opponent be passing once again. Full land. Might as well play another Vile. Activate Vile. Putting out Thalia. And Swing for two. Oh, Snapcaster. We could save the meddling mage from snapcaster with the lieutenant or we could copy the meddling mage and aim path to exile very tricky i guess we'll save the meddling mage lieutenant oh they path the meddling mage i guess that makes sense i suppose that means they have fatal push in hand upon us passing pull noble man file it in swing for four and oh eliminate so how about this vile copying thalia and now pass back upon us passing back oh and meddling mage swing for four and do we vile and meddling mage not quite sure what we'd name maybe fatal push but they would use it by now or do they have damnation you know what let's go for it cryptic command kill our Thalia, and we'll name Fatal Push. Opponent passes back, and nice freebooter. Let's check out their hand. <laughs> they in trouble. Swing for six. They chump. And what is these? Oh, what a good top deck. Maybe drawing two cards. Oh my gosh! Engineered explosives on two, and we have three creatures that cost two. Now we'd be in trouble. Let's force it out of them. Very tragic. All right, pass back. Opponent draws two again, and they pass. We pull Mayor 
ass crack. Swing for one. And before damage, the ass crack. Cool. Opponent plays off. Oh, and a snap caster. Getting back Esper Charm. And they draw two cards again. And then they draw two more cards. And a Jace. They certainly have us pinned here. So we'll take it to game three. On game three, no change to the sideboard. And this isn't the best, but if we are going to draw a relic, now is the best time to have it. And should we vile or relic? Eh, we'll go vile. And luckily, no discard from our opponent. Pull Noble. And we shall play relic. Noble number one. And opponent ops. On it passes, we'll vile and noble. And just pray no engineered explosives. Pretty late. Nice. This be kind of tricky, but swing. Nothing from our opponent so far. Activate vile. Ass crack. Oh, and now they fatal push. But now that they can't counter. Pretty late. On one. And pass back. Opponent passes to us. Pull champion. Swing for four. And might as well play champion. And pray no board wipe. Land number four. Oh, and Jace. But they don't bounce onto our creatures. Instead, they filter the top cards of the library. We pull cavern. Take out Jace. And back to opponent. And once again, our opponent's passing back. Free booter. Cool. Play cavern. Free booter. Uh oh. They're bouncing pretty late to hand. But vile. Which means they push our champion. And they don't think they've helped that through. Oh, Magunda. Snapcast is not a problem because of Relic, and Kling shut off by Prelate, so definitely take the Fairy. Swing for two, and back to Opponent. Opponent's passing back, Canopy will draw. Meh. File. We shall swing for four. Opponent throws on a Snapcaster, which means we'll exile their graveyard. And Meddling Mage, nice. Opponent chumps. We know we have Cling the Dust in hand, so what should we name here? Maybe like Esper Charm? Yeah. Not the biggest threat, but we're not too sure they have four of them in their deck. Opponent passes. And a Prelate. Might as well be extra mean and it in. On two. Swing for four. And Opponent passes back. And with that, we land the final spank. And oh, they did draw Esper Charm. I mean, they could have played Kaz Guile, but that wouldn't have done much. So there we have it. It was quite the spanking, but not unbeatable. If our opponent is clever about designing their sideboard, then we could possibly lose. But on the bright side, counter spells coming to modern, and with Vile and Cavernous Souls, we're the best deck to deal with it. But Modern Horizons 1 was way overpowered, and since Wizards of the Coast never learns their lesson, Modern Horizons 2 will probably have something very stupid in it as well. So who knows, maybe every single archetype today will be replaced by new archetypes. So we'll have to wait and see. Here are the first two winners of the Collector Box giveaway. The best cards we opened are still up for grabs, so be sure to check out that video. And what's even better, winners will also receive one of my hand-painted deck boxes. But that is all for now, and as always, I hope you have a great day.